Without objection. I rise today as one of the founding uh, co-chairs of the Congressional Out of Poverty Caucus to once again bring to light an issue that we have swept under the rug for far too long, the fact that millions of children, families, and adults are living in poverty in America. Last month, the Annie Casey Foundation released its Kids Count data book, which includes state-by-state -state rankings and data on child well-being in the United States. It's a tragedy, Mr. Speaker, that this report reveals that the child poverty rate increased 18% from 2000 to 2009, 18%. Every gain in the fight against child poverty across America in the 1990s was lost from the year 2000 to 2009. We now have 2.4 million more children across America living below the federal poverty line. It's a moral outrage that in this prosperous country, so many of our children are suffering, and we know that the impact is far worse in communities of color. While the national child poverty rate is a staggering 20%, when we break it down, we find some tragic and heart-wrenching numbers. The child poverty rate for non-Hispanic white children is 12%. For African-American children, it's 36%. For American Indian and Alaska Native children, it's 35%. For Hispanic and Latino children, it's 31%. And for Asian-American and Pacific Islanders, the rate is 30 Among Southeast Asian-American children, the poverty rate is 22%. These statistics, these children, this childhood poverty rate, this is unacceptable. This data confirms what we've seen in our communities all along. The irresponsible fiscal policies of the prior administration plunged working families, especially those in communities of color, into poverty. This report also reveals the impact of the Great Recession on children and their families. Nearly 8 million children lived with at least one parent who was actively seeking employment but was unemployed in 2010. This is double the number in 2007, just three years earlier. That's why I again call upon the speaker to bring my legislation and Congressman Scott's legislation, H.R. 589, to the floor for an up or down vote immediately to help millions of children with job-seeking parents to get out of poverty. We have 13.9 million people out of work, 6.2 million of whom are long-term unemployed. Worse yet, these numbers do not include those people across this country who have given up on trying to get a job or those who are unemployed. And communities of color continue to carry the burden of higher unemployment rates than the national average of 9.1%. African Americans have an unemployment rate of 16.7% and Latinos an unemployment rate of 11.3%. And so the legislation I referenced increases unemployment compensation by 14 weeks for what we call the 99ers. Our nation has a job crisis, and this is a national emergency, requiring significant investment in the programs and projects that not only better our country, but put Americans back to work. That's why the co-chairs of the Out of Poverty Caucus, Congressman Joe Baca, Congressman Butterfield, Congressman Conyers, and Mike Honda, we sent a letter to the president asking him to create a big and bold jobs plan that will address the needs of workers and those seeking work across this country. This will result in helping our economy, our communities, and our nation's children. While we believe that the investment could and should take many forms, we urge President Obama to include key programs and proposals that will support low-income people and grow our economy, restoring TANF, maintaining the emergency extension of unemployment insurance benefits, extend these benefits by 14 weeks, expand targeted federal on-the-job training programs, expand federal programs that support, train, and focus on youth, initiate a work-sharing program that would subsidize wages at firms that manage to substitute shorter hours for layoffs. We look to President Obama to present a bold package of direct investment which is aimed at our nation's most vulnerable, those facing our living in poverty. And most importantly, we look to the Republican majority to stop obstructing Democratic efforts to put people back to work. I urge the Republicans to end their no-jobs agenda that make it easier for corporations, 
to send American jobs overseas, protects tax breaks, big oil, and ends Medicare. I hope they know that to make it in America, we must make it in America.